Melbourne's telecast of the 2001 AFL Premiership season, proudly brought to you by Harvey Norman. There's a store near you. Your champions of Gaelic football. Good kick. Australia take on Ireland in the second clash of the International Rules Under-17 series. Live Monday. Ratten and Hume, Ratten back to Hume, Ratten back to Camparelli. Not a bad kick, he's got it. They're within a goal. He's had a couple of good moments, hasn't he, Camparelli, to that end of the ground. And the Blues stay in it at 8-9 to 10-8 here. Lloyd's four goals and Mercedes three have been important. And so is Barnard. OK, let's go down with Andrew Moe. He's got Mark Harvey. There looks some concern there, Andrew, on Kevin Sheedy's face at three-quarter time. Yeah, Bruce Sheet seemed to be fairly animated and doing all of the work that turn, in that break. Yeah, I mean, I think we uh, outscored them a lot by going inside 50 a lot more than them, but we're just not using the ball properly and we're not uh, covering those loose plays that are dropping back on us at the moment. Fair to say that you over-possessed a little bit that turn? Well, you tend to do that when they're dropping blokes back in your forward line, so we've just got to get our delivery right. And just the update on Mercedes, what news have you got? Uh, not... Not too bad. He may come on later in the quarter. OK, thanks very much. Back to you, fellas. Thanks, uh, Andy, with uh, with Mark Harvey. Interesting point at three-quarter time that Sheeds always delegates his three coaches to speak. He took the entire segment. How important will Favola be, do you think, in the outcome of the match? Well, look, if, if Carlton kick four goals this quarter, restrict Essen to only one or two, they could win the game. So Favola, who started to lead so well, it becomes very important. So too Lappin and Houlihan. They've gone back to a bit more of a traditional setup. He's leading from the goal squares, whereas before, up until halfway through that quarter, last quarter, he was going up there and they were playing the Pagans Paddock syndrome. Blumfield tagging Camperiali this quarter. Well, can the Blues do it? Could they pull off something here they'll talk about for years and years? Or will it be the Bombers again? As it has been so often over the last three seasons. Camperiali slashes it forward, mark taken by Hardwick. Bombers lead by 11 points. It says something about the Bombers that we're getting so excited that they're only two goals in front at three-quarter time. Yep. But they've really been challenged over the last 43, 44 weeks of football they've played. The kick to half forward, first goal, well, you know how critical it is. A three-goal margin would be pretty hard to peg back. Free kick to a Hulahan front spot. Yeah, there was a hold on the uh, incoming ball. He's on the lead here for Vola. Can he work his body? Back to Hardwick, it was a good play by Hardwick, and then clever enough kick to Hurd, went to ground, handball on the up was OK to Wellman. Gentle hands too, wasn't it? And then Wellman down the line, Freeborn, just a little give OK from uh, Porter, who's been so important. Murray Vance, oh, oh shocking mistake. Moorcroft with a chance, over the top to Lloyd, Lloyd kicks his fifth. And that just breaks your heart as a coach because they had full control of the ball in the back line, the Blues, and young Vance, he just mucked up there, got his uh, disposal smothered. Good play by Essendon to do that, but uh, it should never have happened. Andy McKay walks over to young Murray Vance and just pats him on the back and says, chin up, go at it again. Here it is, let's have another look at it. Smothered, yeah. Just got to know the sense of your own capabilities and abilities and what can and can't be smothered off the boot. And two blokes have had little impact. Alessio and Moorcroft there combining to get it to Lloyd. So that'll lift them as well. So back to that sort of three-goal game. Good. Hume gets it from Rice through the centre, switches it to Whitnell. They do need Whitnell to get involved up forward. He's had to have a big job tonight. Well done to Ratton. Ratton, little chip, finds Camparelli. That's his third possession, and we're only two minutes into this final term. So uh, Blumfield's going to have to tighten up on him. Did well, Lance Whitnell. Didn't have to possess it straight up. Just knew a little paddle and tap on was going to be worth as good as a handball. He's an old head ratten, isn't he? <laughs> and again, a big kick here, isn't it? He's kicked two, Camparelli. This is first set shot. 48 metres out, he's kicked it beautifully he's kicked and it drilled it home for three goals. He's kicked beautifully tonight from both ends of the ground, kicking in Bruce at, the, at one end mm -hmm. and then you've got him up in front of goals on the move, on the burst and then from a set shot this time, he has been extraordinary by foot. And Camperiali at the centre bounces, he just lines up at centre half back but uh, he's a beautiful shot for goal. He just lines up at centre-half back as the ball has bounced. He just motors his way through the centre.
Different game, different scoreline. The Bombers had a lot more shots, but there's a little bit of the prelim final about it, isn't there? A little bit. Because Seven the Bombers, man fall line yeah. for the Bombers at the moment, too. So could the Blues just snatch what would be a remarkable result? Oh, Heard no. to Long, to Fletcher, who Robert Walls mentioned in the third quarter could be the game breaker here. The difference could do something. Oh. Jason Johnson's ordinary kick. Jacob's good mark. That was a terrific mark. One thing they can't do, the Blues here, the ball came out that side of the centre bounce and Essendon had plenty of men by themselves. They can't fall off that man-on-man -man syndrome that has got them to within reach of the Bombers at this stage of the game. They fall away from that, they'll blow them out of the water with possession. And a bit lazy there by Porter. He didn't go with Alessio. He just sat back off him. Touch off the boot. Fletcher, who is drifting forward. Mark Johnson, and again smothered, we've had the Blues have done it, and so have the Bombers to the Blues, but the Blues have done it on numerous occasions tonight, haven't they? Oh, it's been a real pressure game. Here, boys. Some of the tackles to, and uh, smothers Carlton. are as good as we've seen this year. Oh, that smother ended up, ended up back on uh, to Mark Johnson's foot. And it's a Massey kick. They've got some good luck down there, but they've deserved it. So Massey gets it almost to centre wing, Ratton unopposed, doesn't take it, and then Porter misses it. They're just a bit sloppy, high tackle. And that was just reckless. I reckon Mansfield's struggling here, boys. He's looking for the bench, looking for the doctor. Keep an eye on him. Who's that, Mansfield? Mansfield, yeah. Thanks, Dipper. So Mark Johnson puts it up to full forward. Fletcher's down there. Lloyd's down there with about five hands. Massey straight to the line, finds it. They're leaning back on the ropes at the moment, the Blues. And they're just punching off the ropes. They need something to happen within five minutes, Carlton. I.e. a goal on the board for them. It's very crowded up there in Essendon's forward line. There are 34 players in Essendon's front half. Porter, McCurry, McKay's got him. And this is the sort of thing that David Parkin doesn't like. Just uh, pack footy at this the other end of the ground, Derm. Have a look at that. <laughs> so that's the Carlton goal we're looking at now. Have a cricket match in there. <laughs> have a look at that. Just 24 players around that pack. Alessio just got his fingers to it. Mansfield built it off it by Hurd, and then Carousel it came out, ratting in close, up and under. It's cool play on, didn't go 10 metres. Danny Jacobs, Jason Johnson's got some space here. Hurries his kick a bit off the side. At the back was uh, Hardwick. McCurry, good tackle, Hume. Fletcher, out wider, Solomon, back. They're trying to force something, and the Blues have held them up, Ratton. Hurt in hard. They're trying to force a free kick. They haven't got it, and the Blues did well. Super well. Well done, Blues. Every time you found that little overlap happening for Essendon, we see uh, Michael Mansfield coming off. Fletcher to return. That's uh, Simon Fletcher. You just thought they're going to get a shot on goal here, but the Blues waved up to them, came up in a wave, and met them. Just try to free a player up with handball, the Bombers. They would have had six handballs in that last passage of play. Remember, Mansfield was heavily decked in that third quarter by Lloyd. Now he's off the ground, Fletcher on. Carousel has read it well. To about 10 metres. Built it away by McKay. That's what you were talking about in the third quarter. McKay obviously wasn't in that contest. Had his man covered, like Massey did in the third quarter, Wolsey, but still came over the top to assist. Yeah, look at the empty space up Carlton's end. Porter, Carousella, just got his boot to it. Could be dangerous. Moorcroft, Moorcroft threw it back, actually. Scooped it back, and it's a behind. That other end of the ground, we could play that indoor footy up there, have another little <laughs> game. That's about the size of the space they use, isn't it? <laughs> Flicked it back, didn't he? <laughs> he did too open-hander. Well, he hasn't missed a target, really, Camper, really. There was one late in the third quarter when I think he was so tight, he kicked it wide, and the Bombers got it, but... It's yeah. a much more populated zone now. He's going for safety out wide. He might have to come along the boundary to Porter. Porter's his long option. If he gets there quickly, he's only got Jacobs, who he's got three or four inches on. Can Porter take it? He does. That's a good call and a good mark. And Whitnell further down. Lance is on the wing. Fletcher, his opponent. And Porter gets it down towards the Whitnell. Well done. Well, they got space in front of them now. Move it quick. Oh, Whitnell's kick is not good. Hardwick pinged it off. And now the Bombers on the counter-attack. 
Can Porter get to the contest? He made a contest with Lloyd. Back to Whitnell. Back to Manson. To McKay. They've got to be careful here. He knows that. Doesn't want to cough it up. He's got Fletcher. no one to go to. McKay sweeps the handball. They need a bounce. Oh, getting it away in a hurry there was uh, Nelson. The Bombers hold them up. Carlton have got to improvise here. McKay went without it. Mercury handball missed the target. Johnson belts it forward. This will be interesting. Massey, Carousella, Solomon. Massey wants the line. He gets it. It's been good, that kid, tonight, Chris Massey. It's probably the most responsible role that he's had with the Carlton Football Club in his short career there. To play centre-half back on Lucas is a real responsibility. Official attendance, biggest of the season so far at 63,088. Porter lays it down. Vance went without it. Solomon's got it. Hooks it back to full forward. The bounce, interesting. It's a touched. I, I reckon it. that's it. No, oh, no. Matty Lloyd was trying to yeah. say that he flicked it up there. Just reading the body language of Lloyd, I was about to say, I reckon he's kicked that. Let's have a look from this angle, it'll tell. I... Oh, off a foot, wasn't it? That's, that's interesting. Was it Lloyd's foot? Well. It's hard to tell. Well, well, well. Here we go. Let's have a look. Could have been Mantens. Yep, it, yeah, was. it was. Mantens. It was a good call, wasn't it? Yeah. Yep. Great camera angles there. I remember several years ago when Greg Williams socked one through defensively, and or was it somebody did it to him and he sucked in the goal and Tony, Tony Evans, I think, kicked it. And, yeah. Uh, Greg Williams. Uh, in fact, Michael Moldhouse wrote an article about it recently. He still hasn't forgiven Greg Williams. <laughs> they kicked the centre wing. That's where they're breaking down, Carlton. They're getting yeah. plenty of possessions in the back half because they've got the numbers there. But once they get to the wings, they Good struggle. Gee, here's a chance, though. Massey. He's got to go to Favola. He's in between two opponents. Beaumont hold it up. to Lappin. Little give was OK. Ratton's chipped to Favola. Got him. He can kick a goal. We know that. Well, it's Ratton who's set up those uh, those shots at goal. He set up Camparelli five, six minutes ago, and he's just set Favola up. But really pleased to see Favola moving around Durham. Yep. He hasn't uh, stood still. He's been mobile. And uh, Henneman, his opponent's just trailing there. there. And uh, the young fella, after a pretty ordinary first half, has come out and had a real crack. Played that like a centre-half forward, Wolsey. Kicks from 50. If the Blues are to win, you reckon he's got a That's goal? A good he's hit. a thumping kick, he's kicked three. Gee, that's a big thump. You could just hear the hear the ball, the recoil in it. I reckon the longest drop punts actually spin slower and go left to right. I don't <laughs> know why. I just reckon in my time, every, the, every kick I've seen, Wolsey, the slow spinning drop punts get extra yardage and they go left to right. It might be the opposite of golf, the mm. draw. Yeah. <laughs> He's pretty happy with that. It's a good kick. Barnes sitting it out, seven points the margin. Gee, if Whitnell could turn Fletcher a couple of times and kick a goal or two, the Blues have got a chance here, haven't they? What an important clearance here. Seven points. Hume was smothered. McKay was smothered. It's desperate times here for oh. both clubs. Beaumont, good tackling by the Bombers. They're both at it. It's a real Carlton Essendon clash here. The ball at centre half forward. Charge Beaumont on his wrong side. He's a left footer. He scrags it away to centre half forward. The little gift of the hand from Lappin. And he's kicked it. There's a point in it. There's something happening here. What an important clearance there. And Andy McKay coming in off the uh, wing there, into the centre square, there to lay assistance. Assist that gathered ball after Hume was smothered. And that's where the ball went to. Almost gobbled up there on the chase down. And what composure from the kid. The handball was on. But isn't that great where he took it on himself to kick it? My word it is. And we said it three-quarter time. Lappin, Hula, hand for Vola. Yep. The young fellas up forward, they had to lift. And they've been ably supported by Ratton in the midfield, who's set up with a couple of clever little chip kicks into the forward 50. Porter's been so important in the centre square, hasn't he? Oh, he's rucked tirelessly. He's been terrific. Look, he probably had a six or seven-minute break just before three-quarter time when Hotton rucked. Down to a point. Could the impossible happen here? 
one defeat last year, the Bombers. They won their first 20 games, including round 20, before 91,000 against the Blues here. And they're getting some brilliant opposition from a team which has been decimated. There's ex-Hawthorne Premiership player Andy Gowers in the stand. Ex-Brisbane player too, Doom. You had him there as well. 76 to 75. It is not the scoreline we expected. Johnson, Jason to Alessio. Bangs the centre half forward, a bit wider in the end. They've got numbers, the Bombers. Solomon tries to slap it back. Mark Johnson, still Mark Johnson. Well done, Hotton. And the Blues are away to McKay. They're playing with wonderful spirit here, and they have had their touch of luck. What the tackle count upstairs, boys. It's just terrific, Carlton. They've been on it all night. Edge of the seat stuff. Do you it reckon is. Big Jack would be looking for a fag right now? Uh, Big Jack would be counting his money because he's going to win a bet. McVeigh tagging Camparelli now. Blumfield started this quarter. He struggled. And, uh, gee, Camparelli's just had them come at him all night. And he's taken them all on and beaten them all. 12 possessions to Blumfield. So he's been real light on in that department tonight. James Hurd on the ball. Beaumont going with him. Oh, well done. Lay down by, by, by uh, Porter, back to Hardwick, measures the kick, McKay gets a fist in. Every contest is vital to the outcome of the match. The luck with the Blues, Colpert just bangs to the paddock. Fletcher's looking for it, he wants the bounce. Still Fletcher, they've got the numbers. Oh, he's, Fletcher can't get it away. Whitnell threw it back to Lappin. Lappin's kick is a good one. The Blues can be in front deep into the last quarter. Ratton, the old head steady. Go back, have a shot, measure it. Nice for him to get one back too, Bruce. He's set up a couple earlier in this quarter. And again, good composure by the young Carlton players. They didn't blaze away. He'd be pretty tired, Brett Ratton, but he's usually an accurate kick. Kick the goal in the opening term. This to put the Blues in front. It's looking all right. They are in front. Can well, you believe okay. it? Well, this game has gone from a good one to a great one in 15 minutes. And it's just been so hard and tough. And again, Camparelli in the contest. Whitnell picks the footy up, dishes it off to Lappin, and Lappin, he sees uh, Ratton come into the forward 50, and he just spots him up with a little drop punt. Twice the Bombers have led by three goals basically in the match and the Blues have kicked the next three. Once in the third quarter, once in the last. What They're... an attitude they've got after a pasting last week. It, it, just the decimation of this list too. It's like Australia A taking on the Invincibles and just getting up over the top of them. Johnson. So the Blues lead by five points. Heard. Desperately trying to impose himself on the match now. Camparelli can't get through. Look at that for gang tackling. Ball up. Well, their ability to keep the Bombers to 11 goals has been so impressive. And if you want to know all about it tonight, there's going to be a lot to talk about on the internet after this, i7sport.com.au. They're all in a straight line. Nobody is outside a shot, so everybody's come to the spine of the ground now. Everybody wants hands on. Ratton, only as far as McCurry to Barnard, floats it inside oh, well 50, done, Massey. Massey front spot. It ricochets off Lucas, and again the breaks go to the Blues, and Ratton to Whitnell. They can't waste the ball from this point on, can they? He's got to be careful. Favola on a long lead. Inside to Simon Fletcher. Back to Whitnell. Whitnell's at centre wing. They'd love to get two kicks in front, the Blues. The next goal, if they could get it, Wellman, Ratton, over the line. And Ratton's playing one heck of a quarter. He's in and under everything. He's setting it up. He's kicking goals. I tell you what, there'll be a lot of blue supporters right now saying, I wish we had the clock on up the uh, the countdown clock on the scoreboard. They'd be riding that one even for the last 10. Alessio Camparelli, boundary throw in. Six kicks in this final term to Brett Ratton. He's been hot, hasn't he? So the Blues by five points here. Last year when they were in super form, maybe not early, but they lost by 24, 26 and 45 in their three clashes. Ratton again. Seventh kick in this last quarter. Henneman, oh, they both went. The ball to ground. Ramanaskis hard on lap and good stuff. Ball up. Can they conjure something from here? The Blues and lead by two goals. Camper really such a big match that he's played tonight. 
Is it the right end of the ground for the Blues? Well, they've had plenty more possessions this, this term. 48 to 36, Carlton's weight. Whitnell, Fletcher, Wellman, Camparelli trying to get a handle on it. Couldn't get a clean handle ball up. McCurry's actually gone up onto the ball. James Hurd is on the ball. But if McCurry goes there, that takes Andy McKay to the ball. And the two best at winning the ball from a stoppage situation like this for Carlton are obviously Ratton and McKay. I'd pull McCurry out of there. Just get him away from there. Looks like he's... He's trying to break these tag by, from McKay by following around Lappin now. Whitnell laid it down, but right only up. as far as Wilman. Read it well. Oh, runs a long way. And, and then kicks walk. to the space. Important ball. Terrific mark. Yeah, Barnes is by himself now. He's coming off the bench. Yes, John Barnes. And Porter's had to work double time to get back. Hardwick has a lateral kick. Hardwick takes his man on freeborn and gets around him. And then a centering ball. McKay's underneath that. Lloyd, big fly. Down to Jason Johnson. Hume's tackle was effective. Manton just gets it out far enough to Nelson. Fletcher's hands were quick to Ratton. Little quick kick. Good take by Whitnell, having a good last quarter. Then to Nelson. Nelson wants the boundary line, and he's going to get it. And Bruce, Mark Johnson ran with Ratton for the first... 17 minutes of this final term. Ratton just far too good. He wouldn't tighten up. Ramanaskis now has the job on Ratton. So it's set a wing. Still plenty of time here, but the Bombers are finding it hard. It's been a while since they kicked their last goal. I think it might have been at the start of this last term. They got the first one through Lloyd. Hume's kick. One minute mark of the last quarter. It was the last time they kicked a goal. It was 18 minutes ago. And here come the, uh, the Blues for Vola. A boundary throw in. Just bit, uh, I think the Bombers have got Hardwick as a loose man in defence. So that last goal came nearly 20 minutes ago for the Bombers. Remember, it took them 16 or 17 minutes to get their first goal tonight. Barnes back to Hardwick into the centre. The Blues do have the numbers, an important ball. Culpit, still Culpit, able to get it onto his boot. Nobody there. Loose Look, man, Hardwick. So Hardwick's got it to Barnard. Barnard, half back to centre wing. Still down the line. Good kick to McCurry. Carlton, uh, Carlton got Porter back there. So he'll have to go short. McKay has actually moved away from McCurry now. He's, he's I reckon on the McCurry, ball. Dermot, is coming off the ground and Long will take his spot. We'll, we'll have a look after this kick. He's pant bracing up on the boundary line, isn't he? Uh, Long ready to go. McCurry takes Nelson oh. on. The handball to Barnard, to Wellman. Wellman centering kick, the Blues should mark it. They do. He's McCurry good. coming off, long on. So McCurry's off. Colpert after a sweeping handball. Now Lappin's running hard for him. Colpert's decided to bang to centre half forward for Vola versus Henneman. Henneman for Vola. Lappin's the man. He waits for it for Vola, gets it to him. Lappin up under, not good, out on the fall. Not the result. Oh, did Solomon touch it? He, he did. did. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Well, he had to go for it, didn't he? I mean, he's so concentrating in terms of what he's trying to do. The thing was, there's no talk to him to mark it. You just reckon when you see that, it's going to be Carlton's night, don't you? They're oh. good signs for Carlton. Half forward flank. To your goal here would make it pretty tough for Vola. They work forward. Oh, well done, Rats. Well, it doesn't matter what throwing. happens tonight, boys. There's a challenger. No doubt, the uh, Dipper. Have a look at this bloke on screen. He has been sensational, Brett Ratton. No Cooter. No Stephen Silvani. No Craig Bradley. We know that Allen's out for about uh, 10 weeks. Barnes down. Ramanowskis gets a high, long torpedo to centre wing. The belt at the back from Massey has played a blinder. Quick kick away came from Nelson. Hume's underneath it. You know he's courageous. Oh, that's kick. got to hurt. It's a free kick. Yeah. Kept his eyes on it. Barnes from behind. Well, see, that kick that came forward of the centre for Essendon, why won't Porter come up and meet that? Because he's hugging defensive 50. Yeah, yeah. He probably should move downfield a bit. He's two kicks behind the plate. Yeah, just even one and a half. So if the long kick comes out, at yeah. least he can get onto the end of it. So he's coming into picture now. He's, he's an option. He's an option. He's got a lot of Robert. He's, uh, he's run down into the forward line. Now, don't give it up, Hume. He can outmark Barnes. Use it. So Hume goes to half forward. Fletcher's marked it. Fletcher from Carlton's marked it. 
Well, how big is this kick in the context, not only of this match, but of the season, in terms of where Essendon sits with everybody? I'll tell you what, if Carlton get up tonight, what they should do down at that club is make a mini plaque just in their own club rooms because this is one against all odds. All odds. They should reward this team if they get up, and this kick is going to go a long way to something like that happening. It's not an easy kick. It's 50 metres out. It's coming back. It's He's easy. got it. They've kicked the last five goals of the match, Carlton. They've kicked the last five goals of the match. They trailed by 17 points. They name, now kneel, lead by 11 points. You said it wasn't an easy kick. That went through easy. Well, we said it three-quarter time, Dermot. Carlton kicked four, hold Essendon to one. Now, yep. easier said than done. Yep. But their young players have just been terrific. Led, of course, by Camper Rally and Ratton and, and Porter in the ruck. You've got to remember, too, the first one that Essendon got was a mistake from Vance, and it would yep. have been easy to drop the bundle right there and then. But what character shown by Carlton. Big Jack will be chuffing away right now. Well, they're not gone, the Bombers, but you no. reckon if Carlton get one more goal, they'll win. They lead by two kicks. In a low-scoring game, if they can conjure another goal here, you reckon they can pull off the impossible? And that little number 27 for the Blues, Hume, has been terrific. He's put his body on the line time and time again. Well, so every five time kicks a, yep, in the every, last quarter here. Every time there's a bounce-up, Carlton will be pretty happy, won't they? It's oh, stopping yeah. and starting. That's They're... Hume on the right-hand side of screen, and he loves getting the knees dirty. Camperelli punches forward to Damien Fletcher. Doesn't go far. And the Blues get it back to centre half forward. Lappin attacks it. Solomon, cheers a good tackle. Fletcher hooks it back. Dustin Fletcher, I called him Damien, didn't I? The ball to centre wing. Ramanaskis. Still Ramanaskis. Can he break the tackle to Barnard? Barnard leans back to Lucas. Can't quite find the footy. Who did well to Porter? to Beaumont, Lappin looks up and takes, no he doesn't, Whitnell's hands were good, clever play Whitnell, Lappin was good too. Long coming off, Carousel are on. Bombers have got an extra man in defence, that's Damian Hardwick, and I just think if you want to win the game, you've got to get, uh, you've got to make it a contest with Carlton now. Time almost becoming a factor now, isn't it? We yep. are getting deep into this last quarter, Ramanauskas. They haven't kicked a goal in 24 minutes, they need two in the next three. That's a great tackle. He's ducked the head from in front. He's taken the tackle from behind, and uh, Johnson in front, as soon as he felt it, yep. he buckled over and made out that he was tackled too high. That's a good decision by the umpire. Ratton telling him to kick it long. Free kicks 26 to 10 in Carlton's favour. Can Whitnell take the mark? Whitnell does take the mark. And the reason he took it, Bruce, because Essendon know they have to win it from here, so they've moved Fletcher to centre-half forward. Scotty Lucas has gone back there. And against someone like Lance Whitnell, Scotty Lucas does not have the body to spoil him in that situation. What's this? He tries to put the knee up, but gets nothing on him. He should have put a fist on it. Yep. 50-metre penalty. A 50-metre penalty. Well, they're rattled. They're rattled. They're gone. Remembering that Whitnell has not had a shot for goal or not, and that was no gimme. It is now, and the Blues are going to pull off a remarkable upset here. There are little stouches going on left, right, and centre. Boy, oh boy, in the bragging stakes, you reckon Big Jack's got one up tonight. They're going to talk about this for the rest of the season as Whitnell puts them three goals in front. And there are 14 other coaches around Australia thinking, hallelujah, they can be beaten. Oh, I was watching that and I was watching behind play and I was just thinking to myself, if you're a Carlton player, do not do anything. If somebody from Essendon pushes, chops you around, let them do it. Just wait for him to kick the goal before you get a decision reversed. So Scotty Lucas put no fist up, as you call. Moorcroft coming, on with the, coming off with the blood rule. Well, he'll be embarrassed and frustrated, I think, Moorcroft. He's had little impact tonight, a little blood rule, and off he goes. Carlton will kick the last six goals of the match without reply. 
Whitnell Carl has stood tall in the last quarter. Carlton runner Peter Deans out on the ground and uh, he's just giving instructions. I reckon they might be saying, we might just bottle it up, boys. Just get back there. Not long to go. They know exactly how many minutes, seconds there are on the clock. The Carlton coaching staff, Peter Dean, well, he played about 250 games. He'll, he'll be back there as an extra player. Carlton are only playing four forwards, so they're stacking the back line. The other two are gone into the back line. Porter, what a game to Beaumont. Beaumont kicks to half forward for Voller and Henneman. Well done that time, Henneman. But, oh, the big picture is that the Blues have beaten the Bombers here. They kick the centre wing. Hurd's marked it. Just Beaumont's got to push back. McCurry's back on. Oh, well done, Fletcher. Simon Fletcher's had a terrific last quarter. His thumping goal put them two kicks in front. Yeah. And I reckon they might start to play a bit of possession football here, the Blues, if they can just get a free player, work the clock down, keep possession. He's got Calpert ahead of him. The Bombers have got to match up now, don't they? They've got to man up yep. quickly. Yep. And the umpire's giving him the wave on on the right of screen there. Big Saint Porter Kicker. running hard. Look at Porter, just tireless, running down there so he can give a contest. Center wing, Porter. Hands were there. Heard. Ramanaskis. Gee, what about Wayne Britton's performance as a coach tonight? It's his third game, taking Brave. Kevin Cheedy up for the first time. Wayne, Brave too, wasn't Wayne Britton has coached enormously well. And his players, look, they've got so much faith in their coach. They love their coach. They know that he's with them all the way. He's gone out first quarter, one-on-one, -on -one, make it a contest, low-scoring game. Let's just get our nose in front. Hume's cramped off the ball here behind defensive side of the pack. It's the lowest score for the Bombers at the moment in, in more than a season. Last year, their lowest score was 12 goals. They kicked it on three occasions, 12-9. They're stuck on 11-10. And when you've got your star players and your experienced players out, it just means that Camperelli and Ratton had to really hold up tonight, and they've done it so well. They've been on top of the table for a record 31 weeks. The Bombers have won 40 games out of their last 43. And tonight... In round three, they're going to be beaten after they went all the way to round 21 last year before a defeat. This is extraordinary. No Silvani, no Kuda Fides, no Bradley from the selected lineup. I just, I, we talked about it before the game. I looked at Carlton's list on paper and I thought, and look, this is flattering to Carlton's win tonight because I looked at it and thought that is an incredibly weak Carlton team. And they've won. This is an extraordinary. And Ke Kevin Sheedy, the Bombers were looking for their 100th victory tonight against Carlton in the history between the two, and they have been denied, defied all night by a brilliantly constructed win by the Blues. Mark Johnson's got it, and we are seconds away from what will be one of the most remarkable victories of this season. Don't worry about that. Whatever happens over the next five months, this is one to save us. Well done. Remarkable stuff. Historic, famous, call of a delight. The Blues have created some history here. They're pretty happy, the boys. And why not? Against enormous odds. What were the odds that we'd be hearing that song tonight? And he's pretty cool, calm and collected, Wayne Britton, as he comes down from the coach's box. But he will be absolutely delighted that Wayne Britton and his coaching staff put their planning into this game. And uh, they've come up with a terrific win. Let's go down with Andy Marr with Brett Ratton. It is phenomenal down here. What a fantastic, fantastic performance. Yeah, uh, to the board's credit, they, you know, they just worked their bum off all night and, uh, you know... It was just great to get the four points. Mate, you've played in some huge wins, some premiership wins. Where does this rate alongside those? Well, you know, for home and away, there's none bigger yeah, than we'll, this. Let's go with them, mate. Yeah. Let's go with them. How does, how does that feel? Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic, you know. Yeah. To have the, um, you know, the, the three great blokes out, Silvani, Bradley and Kuna, and to win the game, it's just, you know, absolutely huge. Did you think you could do it? Deep down, did you believe you could beat this mighty team? Well, we thought if we could get a bit of the footy and get a bit of scoreboard pressure, you know, you start putting a bit of pressure on them and, uh, you know, you don't want to be coming from behind against Essendon because they're such a great team. And, you know, we sort of sat with them all, all day and, um, you know, to get across the line is absolutely fantastic. What, what was Britton saying to you all week and before the game tonight? What was the sort of, what was the gist of his message to you? 
Uh, it was pretty hard because, um, you know, we didn't know Kuda wasn't playing until today. Bradley, not till today, and Silvani. So we sort of had, thought we had a pretty competitive lineup, and then you lose three blokes like that. And uh, to the bloke's credit, it's just unbelievable. Mate, fantastic performance. Off you go. Well played. Back to you, fellas. Thanks for that, Michael Mansell going up there. Interesting here, Heard and Ramanowskis are just looking across. They haven't left the arena. Was it Mercedes that was hobbling across a moment ago? mercedes has got a big bandage on his left knee. We thought it was her hamstring. We might have thought it was groin, but he's bandaged up at the left knee. It was almost like Essendon were perplexed coming off the ground. They didn't know whether they should walk off the ground. Silvani there. Was that Stephen Silvani there? Stephen yeah. Silvani. I think Steve's only four or five games short of his 300. Kevin Sheedy walking around the boundary now. Hands behind the back. He looks like he looks like Napoleon at Waterloo. The way he's just walking there. Well, it was the arch enemy that did it to him tonight. I mean, some people last year were saying it was a loss they had to have against the Bulldogs. This is this, Bradley. Yep. This was not the loss they wanted in round three. There's Sheets. Well, this is an incredible night. It really is. It has set the Easter weekend up like nothing else. I, I, I can't recall another home and away game which I... I've seen a bigger upset, a true upset. They were pretty disappointed last week when they got rolled by the Hawks. They've come out tonight against the odds. They've had a magnificent win. This could set them up for the season. They've got two home games, Adelaide and St Kilda, the next two weeks. Talk about singing it with gusto, and why not? They have pulled off a minor miracle here tonight by beating the Bombers against all the odds. It was 14-9 to 11-10.